All right, today in the shop, we have a Troy built TB110 push mower. We're gonna do some uh, maintenance on it. It's running a little bit rough. We're gonna change the oil, the plug, clean the carburetor, change the air filter, all that fun stuff that makes it run better. All right, so let's get started with the oil. Your oil dipsticks right here. There is no drain plug on the bottom of this unit. So there's uh, two ways to do this. One, you would have to drain the gas completely because you would take off this dipstick and literally tilt the mower with a pan underneath of this, such as that, into the pan, all right? But in the shop, we have one of these little hand pumps, all right, and this is for sucking oil out of machines. And essentially, what we're gonna do is just take this dipstick off and we stick, oh, I'm dripping oil all over here. We can uh, stick the tube down there and then with my other hand I'm going to pump which is going to drain it into there all right these you can pick up at Napa AutoZone Advanced Auto Parts uh, places like that not sure if Home Depot would have them they may have them and we're gonna pump that oil out of there all right, oil's out of there. And I want them to keep in mind, when you take these dipsticks out, uh, what we tend to do is just set them right on the ground next to us. And uh, if you're a homeowner, you're probably out in your yard or somewhere, maybe in your driveway. Depending on the type of surface you have, you're going to get little pieces of sand or rock or grass or whatever stuck on this dipstick. And if you don't wipe this off when you stick it in the machine, just that one little piece of sand is going to get up into your engine block and it's just pretty much going to destroy your motor and it's not really good for it so wipe the dipstick clean before you put it back in there the type of oil you want to typically put in these is your standard uh 5w30 i got this from napa but you can get this pretty much at any auto parts store i just prefer napa they're local to me and these guys have been really good to me but this uh oil here is good for most push mowers and it's really good at uh, most temperatures now these motors they fill up really fast the crankcase so when you're pouring the oil in pour very small amounts at a time and then go ahead and check it and when i mean sm very small amounts i'll show you that's it then go ahead and check it all right um depending on how you drained it you may not have gotten all the oil out so regardless of what the manufacturer calls for, you know, let's just say it called for half a quart and you put a half a quart in but you didn't get all the oil out. Well, you still had oil in there so you added a half a quart of oil to that and now you're gonna be over the limit and your motor's gonna start smoking and running really poor when you start it up. When you're pouring oil in here, you got oil that's getting coated all around this uh, spout here, all right? So if you put this in real sloppy, all that oil is going to hit the sides of your dipstick here and you're not going to get an accurate reading because it's going to be all caked up on the dipstick from rubbing on the sides. So try to go as straight in as possible without rubbing the sides and make sure you click it all the way in. Don't just go down until it touches because you're still missing about a quarter of an inch if that's going to go down when you turn. All right, now pull it straight back up and uh, let's see, we're right at the bottom of the dipstick there at the first hole so we're going to fill some more until we get that right where it needs to be mine took about a half a quart and um i know a lot of other mechanics will give you exactly uh what the factory recommends as far as putting back in the machine i don't like to do that again because if you didn't drain it correctly and you go put that amount back in your machine, then you're overfilling it and it's not good for the machine. So get a roundabout of what the machine takes, but still put it in very small increments and save yourself a lot of headaches from having to redrain it or having a motor that's smoking and now you have a, uh, a mosquito killing machine. The spark plug will do next. And you come around to the front of the machine and you see this OHV overhead valve right next to it will be your plug make sure your motor is cool because you're also right next to the muffler you will burn your hand trying to get in here all right you should be able to pull these right off 
with your hand like that and this is going to be a 5 8 you're going to need a deep socket when i say a deep socket it's going to, have to be pretty lengthy because it's a long spark plug and you're going to have to get an extension that comes out past this cover here because if you do this on an angle you will snap this plug inside of the head so you want to either come out level with this or a little bit farther so that is why you're going to need this deep socket so when it goes on there you can see i got enough room where i can pull up all right there we go Plug is out. A little bit of corrosion. I've actually seen worse. But uh, since we're doing a full maintenance on it, we're going to go ahead and just uh, swap this out. The plug you're going to want for this doesn't have to be Champion, but <clears throat> if you call your parts store, you will give them this number RC12YC. That's the plug you're going to want. They can cross reference it and uh, get you that exact plug. Now when you get your new plug, people do make mistakes, so make sure that, see this part here, you want to lay your other plug next to it and make sure that they match up, alright, because you don't want this part too far down into the head and have the piston smacking that spark plug, alright, so the numbers certainly match up, RC12YC, and you can see they're identical plugs. And go ahead and put that new plug back in and be very careful this should as easy as it came out as easy as it came out with my hand it should go back in just as easy to get started anyway you don't want to cross thread these very easy to strip that block out in there so don't force it in and jiggle a little bit as you're turning Jiggle that plug and it'll work its way in. And that's how you know you got it seated right. If you put that in and turn and it's tight, don't start cranking on that socket. You're gonna strip that head out. Now after you get this snugged up by hand to where you can't turn it anymore, you drive back on and you're only gonna do this about a quarter of a turn. You're gonna feel it get tight. Don't crank down on that. You will snap that plug just Nice and snug there. And that's it. When you push this back on here, make sure you hear it click. And it's seated on there. You'll feel it. Right there. Okay. Alright, moving on. Over here by your gas tank, you're going to have your air filter. This is where 75% of your problems come with your mowers when they start running rough. Typically, it's usually this or the spark plug. But I found that most of the time it's just this. So you want to pull this clip off here, and there's going to be two little tabs on the bottom. Just pull out and up. Now, if you look at the air filter, you'll see all the grass that's caked in here and the dirt. All right, and essentially that's like trying to, if I had to explain it, jogging with a mask on around your mouth, and you can't really breathe. You're gonna start panting really, really fast. That's pretty much what the mower's doing. All right, so there's two ways, three ways to do this, all right? Now, if you're a homeowner, you probably don't have access to an air compressor. Um, so what you wanna do is just tap these, try to loosen up all that grass. And if you have a air line you can blow the grass out. Now you don't want to put your air line too close to this filter because what happens is you won't see it. You'll blow it out with air, but what you're actually doing is there is little vents, little tiny holes inside of these filters here. And you will expand those holes wider with that air pressure. And what happens is all of that dirt and grass will then get into the motor. And that's not really good for the motor. So if you do have an air line, I only got one hand here, instead of blowing it right next to the air filter, you want to hold it back and blow back here. 
Um, typically only 20 PSI should be blown into a filter. When you have an air gun, you're blowing, you know, 80, 90, 100 pounds of pressure into here. You're actually ripping this filter apart even though you don't see it and allowing all this stuff to enter your motor. All right. So uh, if you don't have one, just try to tap it the best you can and get all that stuff out of there or run to your local lawnmower shop and get a new filter. Uh, this one I don't know if I have here in the shop, so I am gonna get my airline and I am gonna blow this debris out of here. We actually got all of that caked up grass out of there. Um, yep, it's all out. So now this is pretty much reusable at this point. All right, we're gonna leave this off because next, we're gonna go into our carburetor and we're gonna have to take these nuts off that are inside of here. We got one, two, and there's a third one right down there. And we got a fourth one right there. I don't know why uh, Troy Build actually did this, but these sockets here are going to be 932 and these are going to be a 5 sixteenths. Go ahead and pull it off. There's going to be a hose that's connected to this that might prevent this from coming off, but there you go. See? Connects right in there. All right. Now, I would go ahead and get some carbon choke cleaner or something and uh, just wipe this down really good. Don't want all this grass and dirt hovering around your carburetor here. Next thing we want to do is and and you want to be very careful because these carburetors are made of plastic they're really really cheap and they will break really really easy all right but we want to get this fuel line off of here okay so we uh you're gonna need a pair of uh pliers or a pair of crimps you're just really gonna squeeze that and slide that down and that'll pull off of there we are actually gonna pull it from this side here pull that off and then uh, we're gonna let this hose drain. We're gonna get a container and let this fuel drain out into the container. Easy way to do that is this hose isn't really long to fit into a container next, next to the mower here. So you can get yourself a little tray and set it on top of the mower to drain it into. But if, according to how small the tray is, it may fill up with gas if you have a full tank here. So a trick to that is you take a, a funnel and you put it up there so that when you pull your hose off, you want to hold it into that funnel. And you're going to have the funnel drain into a pan on the floor. And as you can see, it's draining into my funnel, down into our pan here. Our gas is drained. Now, we want to get to this carburetor. And we got some linkage up here, we got some springs, and these are the parts that you want to be very, very careful on. Um, you want to remember how they go back on. And you certainly don't want to break anything. So it's very uncomfortable to work from this angle here. And what we're going to do is take our 5 16th socket. And we're going to take this uh, cover off here. And that'll allow us to be able to get straight down in there. Now, if you're new to this, what I recommend is once you get this off, take some pictures of how everything is assembled up there. Okay? And if you can't see how it's assembled because it's so dirty, clean all of this off first. Take yourself a picture. All right? But take a, take a picture before you clean it in case when you're cleaning it, you knock something off. So take a picture when it's dirty and then clean it off a little bit and then take another picture. This way, when you start disassembling things, <clears throat> you can go back to the picture and you'll, and you'll know exactly how it was. I got my three bolts out. Now when I lift up on this, this pull start is going to want to pull that cover up and that's okay. Just pull it up and out of the, let it sit out of the way there. Just like that. You can see there's a lot of debris in here <clears throat> on this flywheel. So, if you have an air gun or so, definitely want to clean 
all of this out. But now we're able to get right into that carburetor. This is also a good time to inspect your flywheel here. Make sure there's no cracks, nothing's broken, nothing's loose. All right. Also, if you needed to change your ignition coil, this is your ignition coil here. You can see the two bolts, which comes out to your wire here. That is how you would take your ignition coil out. It's right there. All right. But that tutorial, this tutorial is not focusing on that. Um, I'm going to get an air gun and I'm going to clean all of this out of here right now. When using an air gun, or even when you're just cleaning, one thing you want to do is put your cap back on your gas tank. Well, you're going to be blowing all of this stuff inside of your tank. And you'll go ahead and you'll clean your carburetor out. And you'll have all this gook inside the tank. And then when you put your clean carburetor on, you're just sucking it right back in anyway. So put the cap back on. Your fuel line here. Get yourself a bolt that you can put in there to seal that up. And uh, the carburetor, I'm not really going to worry about covering that up because I'm taking this off to clean it anyways. And another thing to keep in mind too, if you are using an air gun to blow the uh, clean this, you uh, want to take note of this gasket on the carburetor. When you're blowing air around, this little gasket will go flying and uh, you'll have yourself a whole bunch of leaks if you lose this gasket. So what you can probably do is just take that gasket off now and just set it out of the way for later on. All right, I got everything uh, pretty much blown off here and cleaned up. And while I have the air hose here, what I'll do is I'll remove this cap now. And uh, this hose that we took off, I will actually point the air inside this hose. Now, I don't want to blow too much pressure through there. So I want to keep my hose backed off a little bit, but I do want to blow some air through there. Inside of the tank, I don't know if you can see it in there. There it is. There's a fuel filter. All right, see that right there? And that can get caked with debris and that can cause your lawnmower to run rough. So what I'll do is I'll shoot some air through here, but I will hold my line back to about here not going to stick it right on the hose and really blow that filter out of there. But uh, that's one way to clean your, uh, your system out. And you can take the air line and kind of shoot something down in there. Some quick bursts right on top of that filter. And then I will put it on the hose right there. In case you had any buildup or anything in this line, just kind of uh, freeze everything up there. All right, now you can see we look nice and clean in there. So go ahead and put your cap back on. Now at this point, uh, you probably could take some carbon choke cleaner, spray it in the carburetor, and um, that'll pretty much clean the internals a little bit if you don't really want to do a deep cleansing and uh, you can go ahead and put the machine back together, fill it up with gas, fresh gas, and uh, maybe add a little bit of sea foam. I like adding sea foam into the, uh, the fuel. You can also add it into your oil. It helps lubricate the, uh, the heads, the cylinders, everything. So, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and if anybody else wants to continue watching, I'm actually gonna take the carburetor off and just do a more thorough deep cleaning of the carburetor. Now is the point where you want to take notice of where everything is ran on your carburetor, where the springs are connected and so forth. Because pull the carburetor off, that's when some of these things may come loose and out of place. And you may forget how to put them back together. Now when we pull this off, uh, you can't really see it right now, but there's, well you can. You're going to have two seals back here. You're going to have a, a black one and there's a white one. All right, you don't want to lose those seals, it's very important. So at this point, you can probably even tuck this hose back in there, get it out of the way. And you should be able to slide this off of there, and just like that. Okay, now you see those seals? You can either leave them on there or take them off and just put them in a spot where you're not gonna lose them. To remove these, 
you need to pull this now this you need to be very careful pull this out just a little bit and tilt up by tilting up i don't know if you can see but that's going to allow you to get this one to come out of that hole right there all right i'm going to need both hands for this but i'm going to tilt this up on an angle and shimmy this one out then once that one's out you can see the back one here back there then I'll be able to turn this sideways to take that one off to the throttle. And there it is. Carburetor's out. Uh, take some more pictures if you have to, or video, just so you can see where all the pieces go. Because we're not done yet. We gotta open this sucker up. So make sure that you get a nice clean surface after all you are cleaning the carburetor you don't want to set it down on a greasy surface all right now if you look on the bottom of this you're gonna we're gonna go back to our 9 30 second socket here and we're gonna remove remove these two right here our bolts are out good rule of thumb <clears throat> when you're taking things apart you want to lay them down in order the first thing you take off is always going to be the last thing you put on so let's put them at the end. All right. Now, as we, uh, let's keep them on the cloth. As we take parts off, we're going to lay them <clears throat> in that order. Okay. So when we're putting it back together, we know we, they go back in that order. Make sense? Still with me? Good. Let's move on. 10 millimeter Allen key. All right. We are going to put it in here. Now, this isn't threaded in you're really going to turn this probably a quarter of a turn and that's going to pop out it's going to have a little seal on it all right i'll try to set the phone down so you can see this all right so we're going to stick it in there quarter of a turn and there it is should pop right out and you see that little seal that's on there you don't want to lose that or damage it and you can inspect it make sure it's okay all right and that will get set down next now this is going to operate the same way you are going to twist this cap and you'll feel it come loose you're going to go a quarter of a turn and you're going to pull up and there's going to be another seal around this so you want to be careful not to damage that while you're doing it all right so we want to turn this a quarter of a turn like that and there it goes it pops right out now you're gonna have some gas come out and this is where your float and everything is gonna be okay don't hold this upside down when you're taking it off all right do it take it off from the top set it down and this is where your float is this is where you're gonna inspect your float now it should have a little bit of spring action there see how that bounces back if it's not, your float is jammed, and probably why the carburetor is leaking gas. All right, but this one appears to be okay. Everything actually looks pretty clean in there, but we're going to clean it up anyway. All right, now if you look, there's also a little pin that is holding your float on. You see I can push that? If I push that pin out, that will allow me to remove that float. But you got to be careful, because underneath of that, there's going to be a little jet that will come falling out and you'll lose it all right so let's try to get a better angle on this get yourself a little pair of needle nose pliers and you want to grab onto that pin and do this very gently this is very fragile plastic all right and pull that pin out set that down next in line and now your float will lift right out of there. Now you see that little jet hanging on the bottom? That's what I was talking about. You don't want to lose that. And take note of how that's, how that's in there. You can see that it's actually sitting in a little, a little groove in there. There's a little track. Can't really focus that that slides into. I can push it out with my finger here. Let's see see that track so we can slide it out of that track and when you put it back in it actually slides right back into that track 
okay? A lot of times these get dirty also, so we want to clean that up. All right, that is going to go next in line over here. And our float is going to go there. All right, now we're down to the actual carburetor here where we can start doing some cleaning. There's not too many more elements that uh, I would take off of here. Uh, you pretty much got to the inside of the carburetor and you wanna spray some carbon choke cleaner all around in here, okay, down in all these ports here. That's where your gunk and your buildup's gonna be. And then you also, uh, this is where you probably want to get an air hose, but if not, just soak it real good. All right, but I'm going to spray this down and get my air line and just kind of gently, with some light air, shoot down into all these ports and clean everything out. You can also open up your choke here and spray some in there. All right, any, any uh, tarnish buildup or anything in there. That carbon choke cleaner will clean it out. But one thing to keep in mind, if you are using an air gun, do not spray your air anywhere around this table. Take your carburetor somewhere else and do all of the cleaning on it. Okay? And keep in mind, you still have springs up here that are still attached. You don't want to blow them off. Alright? But you also, with the air blowing around, you don't want to lose these pieces is uh, the machine will never work right again, if at all. This is what I'm using. Got it from Napa. Uh, pretty good stuff. So we're just gonna uh, soak this thing up really good. Now we're just gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes and let that stuff eat away at all the grease and grime and dirt inside. And then I'll get my air gun and uh, blow it all out. And that's it. Everything is squeaky clean new, and uh, that pretty much should conclude the, uh, the tutorial. So to put it back, you're obviously gonna put everything back in order, or we'll watch the video, and uh, that'll help you get everything back together. But and that's it, please guys, hit subscribe below, give me a like, I do these videos daily. I'll see you next time.